All right, so first of all, I'd like to thank uh, all the sponsors of this event. Without them, uh, this wouldn't be happening. Um, yeah, so a big thanks to all of them. Um, all right, so today we're going to talk about Azure Functions, um, specifically in the enterprise uh, context, right? Um, I've been doing Azure Functions for quite a while now, a couple of years, and when I started doing Azure Functions, um, I went to the portal, to the Azure portal, and I went created my f very first um, function app, and I saw that you could create functions in the browser, which was, which was quite interesting, right? Um, but it was all in the browser. So you actually um, used to write your code in the browser, but that didn't look very enterprisey. So it looked like a very nice piece of technology, but it didn't look very um, enterprisey, right? Um, but I was wrong, and I'm very happy to be wrong. Um, so I learned a very different way of doing it, and, um, and that's what I'm gonna try to show you today, right? So you don't need to lose all your best practices. You can still use all of them, dependency injection, or unit testing, all of that, and just expose them by Azure Functions, which is pretty interesting. So that's what I'm gonna try to do today, okay? Um, my name is Thiago Passos. I'm a solution architect uh, at SSW. Um, I've been working for SSW for several years um, in different, uh, different um, uh, jobs and different clients, and it's been interesting. Um, this is my Twitter handle and my, my blog, if you wanna, Get in touch. Also, my, my GitHub is there because the whole source code I'm presenting today, um, I'm sharing in one of my repositories. I'm gonna put a link at the end as well. Um, and personal-wise, I'm Brazilian. I'm father of two, soon to be three. So that's when I actually wrote this talk. Um, now that's not true anymore. Um, I'm actually father of three. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty busy, very, very busy at home. Um, and also when I put together this talk, I was leading a project of nine developers for a, a big, um, big company, big client. And that's also not true because I, I took three months off and that's my, my current job. So I'm putting together three houses and stuff. So I've been busy as well. Um, all right, so that's what I, uh, how I'm uh, splitting my talk. Um, I'm sharing the concept um, of what I'm doing today. So how you can uh, build your application using all the best practices and host in Azure Functions. So that's the concept. Um, and then I'm gonna show you how to get started if the internet allows me. Um, so hopefully I'm gonna be able to show some, something in the Azure portal. Um, then I'm gonna show how the, the best practices are applied to Azure Functions, okay? Um, also how to host your front end, because when you think about Azure Functions, you're all thinking about the back end, how to to have services running, how to have HP triggers, but what about your front end? If you wanna host everything using Azure Functions, you need to also present your UI, okay? And you can also do that, which is pretty cool. Um, and I'm gonna do a bit of DevOps. I know DevOps is a broader um, term, so it's about communication, about um, breaking some of the barriers between the, the areas of your company and stuff like that. Um, but tonight, that means only CI and CD. Okay, so that's what I'm covering tonight regarding DevOps with uh, Azure Functions, okay? All right, so let's, let's check the context now, um, the concept. Um, but before you get there, what's, what's an enterprise application? So anyone wants to give it a try? An enterprise application? Many departments. Many departments, yeah, that's, that's cool. Anyone else? No? Ben Cole, you have ideas? An application running in an enterprise. <laughs> twice as expensive. Twice expensive. Yeah. Applications talking to each other. A lot of connections between different applications. A lot of integrations. Adam? Uh, scalable. Scalable? Yeah. Cool. Custom? So it's not out of the box? Not out of the box. Yeah, custom. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, so that's a, a concept that I got from MSDN. So in today's uh, corporate environment, enterprise applications are complex, scalable, distributed, component-based, and mission critical. So it's basically a, a big application, right? Um, and with any big, big applications, if you screw up in the beginning, it's gonna be very, very hard to maintain. Okay, so you have to um, take very care in the beginning so it's easier to maintain in the future. Okay, 
All right, so here are the challenges that, uh, that I have for all the enterprise applications that I worked uh, on. They are not necessarily technical challenges, but uh, challenges in, in general, and, and some of them will be able to apply to Azure Functions. Um, actually, all of them. Um, all right, so one of the um, challenges is multiple developers, and that's really not a technical challenge. Um, so in the, the project I worked just before being a full-time dad, um, I had a lot of uh, challenges, like interpersonal challenges. So it, it's, that, that's a challenge that happens all the time. Um, but you have to get over it. Um, so the other challenge, which is not really a challenge, is a source control. And any, projects now, any project nowadays ha um, has a source control. But in an enterprise context, that means a more mature way of handling your source control, whether you're using Gitflow or something like that. Um, that's a challenge that you, you, you need to take on board. OK, um, CI CD, so for most of, not most of the projects, for all the projects that we, we have at SSW, uh, now the first thing we do is to build the CI and CD pipeline. So we deliver something to the client straight away. OK, even if it's a hello world application going all the way to as far as, as we can to production and then deliver some value to the customer straight away. All right. That's something that you have to put together early in the project so you, the, the client can see things happening um, quicker. Uh, then, of course, multiple environments. You don't want to get stuck with a single environment. Uh, if you are working for a big organization, you want to have test environments, UAT, um, integration environments, and, and so on. OK, so the logging. So the logging story. So hopefully, if the internet allows me, I'm going to be able to show some of the logging um, in, Azure, in the Azure portal. Um, but the logging is something that you have to also put together straight away when you start the project, right? Uh, whether you choose Raygam, Application Insights, Seek with Zero Log, or, or there are a lot of logging uh, tools available. But it's something that you have to put together on day one as well. So if you wait until you get to production to get your, your logging done, you're already too late. Right? So you're going to have trouble, and you're not going to be able to find what the trouble is. All right. And security. Um, again, security is, is not easy. And ben Cole has a talk on, on Identity Server, which is pretty cool, and it's not easy to, to put together. Um, but there are a lot of um, uh, security providers available out there, like um, OAuth, Auth0, um, no OAuth, Auth0. Um, um, Azure, B, uh, AD, B2C. There are a lot of um, auth and, and yeah, auth providers out there that you can use. And hopefully, I'm going to be able to show how to trigger that with how, how to match that with Azure Functions, which is very very easy, as long as you have internet connection. So I'm going to try to get there. Um, and then a bit down to the code. So how the, does dependency injection work with Azure Function? Um, it's not out of the box. So you, um, it's a bit tricky to get, to get it done in the first place. But once, once it's there, it's, it's very straightforward, really. Um, this one is not working quite well. Um, unit testing. So the, there was a guy from Microsoft. I can't remember his name. Uh, but he, he tweeted saying, hey, guys, how do you unit test Azure Functions in your project? And I said, yeah, you, you don't, really. Like, you, you don't unit test the Azure function. That, that's going to be an integration um, test. You, you unit test your application layer, right? And, and that's the whole concept I'm trying to sell here, right? So you, you build your application the same way you would do normally, and then you just expose via Azure functions, all right? So you have your all unit tests um, in the application layer. And then you're just exposing the endpoint. So once, once it's exposed, you don't need really to unit test the, the, the API of your application, right? So you only need to, expo to, to unit test that, that application logic. Uh, all right, so SecureS. So that's a pattern that we've been implementing to all the projects uh, at SSW as well, so which makes uh, more maintainable and, and, and more testable as well. Uh, and if you've been doing that, once you get to expose them um, to Azure Functions, that's going to make your life much, much easier because it's just a command and a, or, or a query that you just need to expose, which is pretty simple. Uh, and the rich front end. So at SSW, we are mainly um, Angular, an Angular shop. 
uh, we do React and we do a bunch of other UI frameworks as well, but we're doing main, uh, mainly Angular. Uh, and today I'm going to show you how you can expose that via Azure Functions, which is pretty interesting as well. All right. Um, let's, let's talk about a typical scenario and, and, and how that's, that's working right now without Azure Functions. So I'm, I'm hopefully uh, most of you will be comfortable with this scenario. And, and then I'm going to show how that represents in an um, Azure Function context. Um, you have your front end, either Angular, React, you're hosting that on IS, you have a website there hosting that. Uh, it can be on premises or it can be in the cloud, wherever, so you're hosting that. And then you have your web API, which is also hosted on IS or it's hosted in you know, Azure App Service or on premises or wherever. Um, and then all of, all of a sudden, you need something that runs all the time, right? And now you find a need to have a window service running somewhere that's going to run all the time to do some processing, to send emails, or to clean the database once in a while. Something that you need to run, you need it to be running all the time. And you're not going to rely on IS to do it. Because if some of you try that, you know it, it's not good, right? It's, it's, it's really, really hard to handle that. Um, and then you have some scheduled tasks. Then your application gets mm, complex and, and more, uh, harder to maintain every time. So you have a scheduled task that you, ha you have to send an email every morning or something like that. Um, and then all of a sudden you have uh, four pieces of the puzzle to deploy differently. So it gets harder, right? So who here is familiar with this uh, scenario? So who here has done that? Cool. All right, and then you have your SQL database. Uh, really, there is not much to it. You can use other databases, but once you get your Azure functions, like, it doesn't handle, it, it doesn't handle the database, so uh, let's leave the database there. All right, so let's talk about the Azure functions and how that's gonna represent in the Azure function context, right? So you've got the front end. How does that translate? Can, we, can you host that on Azure functions? Um, you can, and there is something called proxies for Azure Functions, which is quite interesting, and I'm going to try to show that tonight, today. Um, and your Web API, it's going to be a HP trigger in Azure Functions, which is very, very vanilla for Azure Function. The, the, the first Azure Function you're going to create is a HP trigger, and that's going to be your API, so a bunch of HP triggers. Uh, a Windows service can potentially be a queue, uh, a queue trigger, uh, but it can also be a service buzz or a blob storage trigger or anything like that that you want to run as soon as something happens, right? Um, so if, if, you, if you have a Windows service that's going to process a bunch of files that come in, you can move that across to your blob storage and then listen for that. As soon as it comes in, you can process that, that file to do something, right? Um, or it can be a queue. It can be a bunch of uh, triggers, but that's one of, one of the potential um, triggers for your Windows servers. And scheduled task will be a, a timer trigger, which is pretty simple as well, OK? Uh, SQL is going to be SQL, and that's it. All right. So who here has done Azure Functions before? All right, a few hands. Cool. Does that sound all right, this translation? Cool, so let's, let's get started. So how do you get started with Azure Functions? So first you get to know what Azure Function really is, right? Um, and what's Azure Function? So Azure Function is event-driven, okay? So as, as I showed you before in, the, in, the, in that typical scenario versus Azure Function, you, you saw a bunch of triggers, and, and that's what it is, right? So it's gonna trigger based on event, either HP uh, trigger or a queue trigger or a timer trigger or a bunch of triggers that are available there. Um, and it's only gonna run on this trigger, okay? It's also serverless, um, so you don't need to handle the infrastructure at all, which is, which is interesting. If you have your on-premises uh, environment, you know it's, it's painful. You have to upgrade stuff. You have to, to maintain um, that path. Okay? Uh, it scales based on demand, and also you pay for the resources you consume. Okay? Um, and there is a caveat on that. So that scales based on demand uh, if you choose the consumption plan. Okay, so if you choose a consumption plan when you create your function app, it's gonna scale like up to the roof if you want to, right? Um, 
and also you're going to pay for that. So you got you got to be careful which which plan you choose. Um, if you don't want to get any surprise, you can still use the app service plan, and you know exactly how much you're going to pay per month. Okay. All right, um, so that, that's how you get started. So you go to the Azure portal, there is that plus button in there. Um, so you click on that plus button, and then you're gonna look for function, right? So you're gonna fun the function app is gonna come straight away, and then you're gonna create, and then you're gonna have this, this uh, little form where you're gonna put some information there. Um, you're gonna put the, the function app name, uh, and that's the hosting plan I was talking about, the consumption plan versus the app service. Um, there are a few more uh, differences between the consumption plan and the app service plan, um, but I'll, I'll stay with just the, the scaling um, thing, but there are more, uh, a lot more to it uh, if you wanna do some research. Um, but I'm gonna move on. So you've got, you've got the, the storage account, so that's where you have your, your queue triggers, your timer triggers, you're gonna need that to be able to um, handle the state of that function when it runs. Okay, and also you can use the, the queues in there to put messages and, and things like that. And we're gonna use that for the UI, actually. Uh, and then you have application sites. So if you haven't, if you haven't thought about the, the logging at all for your application, um, just go for application sites, just one click away, one flag, and then you have the logging, right? And any, any failures uh, you have in your application, it's gonna be logged there and you can go to the stack trace and you can see exactly what happened. Um, and you can set some uh, alarms about how long the request is taking and things like that. It's pretty cool, it's pretty rich. Um, and hopefully the internet's gonna allow me to demo that as well. All right, so you create and there you go, you have your function app uh, ready to go and you can create your functions in there. So let's try and see if I have internet connection, otherwise I'm gonna move on. Any questions so far? Do the functions get moved instantly? As soon as the trigger takes place? So does the, run, does the function run instantly? Um, there is a warm up period uh, in the beginning. Uh, if you choose the consumption plan, if your function is cooled down, because if your function is inactive for five minutes, I think, or 10 minutes, it cools down, and then it takes a few seconds to warm up, right? So that, if it goes to this cool down period, then it takes a few seconds to warm up, but that's just once. And then if you have a bunch of things running after that, it's just gonna warm up once, and then it's gonna be quick. Uh, if there is an SLA for, sorry? What if it doesn't? If it doesn't warm up? Yeah. Um, it, it does warm up, so, yeah. <laughs> then you can call. All right. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not aware of that. I've never had any issues where it didn't warm up. But, uh, yeah, I can check. I can check for you. All right, um, so I think I have internet connection, which is amazing, I wasn't expecting to have. Um, but how long do you think it's gonna take for you to create an application where you have authorization, you have logging, and you have an API running? How long do you think it's gonna take for you now without Azure Functions? 10 seconds. 10 seconds. <laughs> wow, you're very quick. And deployed, and deployed to the cloud. It takes more than that. <laughs> any, any takers apart from him? <laughs> All right. Two minutes. Wow, you, you guys are amazing. I'm not gonna talk to you guys. <laughs> All right. Mr. DevOps. Mr. DevOps. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna see if I can create a function very, very quickly here. I'm gonna try to, to, to create one quicker than these guys. Um, I believe the internet is not gonna allow me to be quicker than that, but I'll, I'll try my best. All right. Uh, any, que any questions in the meantime? If that thing doesn't load, uh, I'm just gonna move on and, and go to the other section of the talk. Any? No? Cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think the internet's not gonna allow me to do anything in the portal here. I didn't like. Yeah, I think I'm gonna move on because otherwise uh, I'm not gonna be able to finish the talk. Um, and anyway, it's it's very very easy. So once you click that plus button, you choose. Um, to start with the trigger you want to use, if it's a HP, a Q trigger, blob storage, and a bunch of uh, other triggers that you, that you can choose from. Um, and it's, it's, actually, it's actually very, very simple. I should have uh, had some more screenshots. I uh, wasn't expecting the internet to be that bad. That's really my bad. Um, but yeah, once you do that, your, your API or your timer trigger is up and running like in seconds. It's very, very quick. But it's not very enterprisey because you're using, if you're doing the browser, you're using C Sharp script, which is really not the, the real deal. Uh, what you really want is to have your full C Sharp, right, or .NET Core to run using Visual Studio instead of the browser, right? So that would be an enterprisey way instead of using the browser. Okay, so let's, let's check that, right? Let's see the best practices and how you would actually do in real life, okay? So if you, Go to Visual Studio. Uh, you do have to have the SDK installed, the Azure SDK. Uh, and when you do that, you can go and file a new project. You can choose the, the cloud um, area here, and then you have Azure Functions, all right? Then you can create straight from your Visual Studio uh, instance. And then you can OK. And then you have a few options here. So I'm using .NET Core, and that's why I chose .NET Core. Um, it's still in preview, right? Uh, it's been working fine, but if you want to be conservative, you can always go and use um, .NET Framework, um, which has been there for, for a while now. And then you have these options here. So these are just options to start with. Uh, there are a lot more options to that, but that's only when you create your function app. Okay? So when you create a function app, you can create uh, empty, and then you create your functions from there. And then there are much, uh, many more options available. Okay? All right, so let's see how that works. When you click OK, uh, we'll see in Visual Studio and see how it works. OK, so I've got Visual Studio running here. And I've got a few examples. But before we get to the examples, uh, let me just get, oops. Let me just get this here, just to show you how the how the structure of the project is looking, okay? Um, you, can see, you can see that the, project, the structure of the project is very similar to any project that you would create normally, right? So you have your application layer, you have your tests against your application, um, you have the domain, your persistence layer, and instead of having your API layer where you're gonna have your MVC layer or something like that to expose your API endpoints, you would have your enterprise, um, not your enterprise, your function app layer. We're just going to expose the endpoints, right? Um, if you if you can see here, I'm just going to go quick, quickly to my my tests. Um, so that's the way I was I was talking to people um, on Twitter the other day. Uh, the way you would test is really testing your application layer instead, and you can test the, the way you would do normally, right? So right now I have only two basic tests here. So I've got anti framework. I'm core running, and I'm just returning some, some people from the database and check if that's running, okay? And it all passed, so my tests are okay. And there is not much to it, so I'm using um, Autofact for the dependency injection, and it's, it's quite straightforward, right? Uh, I've got some red stuff coming up here, which is quite interesting. Um, I found out the Visual Studio not playing nice with uh, .NET standard for some reason. Did anyone have any issues with that? No? I'm the only one? All right, cool. It's true. Yeah, it's funny, it's funny. But as soon as I change to .NET Core here, it, that all goes away. But anyway. Maybe I should try now to upgrade. <laughs> should I? No. I think the internet's gonna be happy with me. 
Um, anyway, so let me bring that back. Okay, so um, the application layer looks, um, as, as, I, as I said before, I'm gonna use the CQRS <coughs> button here. So I've got some commands and some queries, um, very basic ones. So I've got a, um, a query here to get the people from the database. That's very simple. And I've got a command to add random, random people to the database as well. So I got like some of the popular first names of 2018 and some of the popular last names from 2018. And then I'm just generating people on the fly, okay? Pretty simple. Uh, in my first example, what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna run locally. Um, for those who didn't know that Azure Functions can run locally for you to test, that's a very good example. All right, so I've got this sample one here. I'm just gonna press F5 and I should get that running, if it does. All right, so we should use trying to get there. That's about live demo, isn't it? I've heard the other day, like, if you're doing live demo for a presentation, d just don't. And, and I'm doing that. It's, I'm going against the, the best practices. There you go, it's running. Um, so what's gonna, what's gonna do, it's gonna pick up all my, function, um, my functions, all my APIs and, and stuff like that. And I'm gonna be able now to hit this URL. I'm just gonna bring that up here. And, oops. and I'm gonna be able to run that, okay? So I've got a breakpoint. I shouldn't have this breakpoint before, but just to show you, you can uh, debug while you're running. So you can just go and check if everything is working well, you can check the, the variables and, and things like that. Um, and then back to the browser, you have your values coming up, okay? Pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's check the, the sample two. Okay, in the sample two, I've got a few, a few more things to it. The, the first one, I have all the logic in the API endpoint itself, which is really not, not a good way to do it. In the sample two, I already have it's a bit fancier, and I've got the dependency injection set up, okay? Um, and the way I'm doing that, um, I got this NuGet package called um, Azure Functions dot um, autofag. So if any, anyone is using autofag here, it's gonna be very, um, very simple to follow. Um, but what I have here, I've got this DI config, and in this DI config, I set up all my dependency injection. Right, so I'm um, scanning uh, my assembly, getting all the commands and queries, and I'm gonna use as the implemented interface. Um, so I've got the, my database here. I'm doing a very good practice here for production applications, and I'm using the in-memory database. Um, it's really, really good. Um, and, and that's it, so I've got everything up and running. And in my function itself, what I'm doing is, I'm, using that configuration for my dependency injection. Okay, question? Is that DI config, is that long lived? Is it static? Is it like overarching or is it kind of per execution? Uh, it depends on, so is, is the DI config per execution? It depends on how you set up. You can set up per execution or overall. Um, in here, I'm using this, this thing here. So I can only set up once and then it goes overall. But yeah, by default, it's overall. And then, and then you use for every function, okay? But you can use per execution as well if you want. Uh, and then that's how you inject. You have that attribute there to inject, and then you use that query. So let's, let's give it a try. So the query itself, I'm just gonna show quickly the query, and it's just a, a bunch of strings, and I have the option to put the sort order, okay? So I'm just gonna go to the browser again, and I'm gonna copy this URL and I'm gonna paste here with either zero or one because it's expecting an integer. Um, so you can see if I pass zero, I've got, oh, um, I've got a, a list of stri strings, which is, which is awesome. If I put one, you can see the list of strings is in the different order. So I'm using the, the query of the command and query um, responsibility segregation, segregation pattern. So it's all, it's all working well. And now let's see the next example. And the next example, 
um, is using uh, EF core, right? So the other, the other query was just a plain uh, list of strings in an array. And I'm, I'm going to use the EF core here just to show you how that's working. Okay, so I'm just going to make a quick change to the sample 4 because the sample 4 is actually adding stuff to the database. And I've got a timer here that's running. Right now it's running every day, but I, I don't want to wait for a day to, for a person to get there. What I want here is stop that, and I'm just going to run every five seconds. And I should have a person every five seconds in the database, and I'll be able to run that to see the, the people coming up from that API endpoint. OK, so it's running now. So I've got these get people. That's what I want to test. If I go to the browser right now, it should be empty, unless I'm not too fast. All right. So as soon as this, is, this, get, this picks up the, the timer, which shouldn't take too long, um, this is going to start adding people to the database. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to show the people coming up. Um, and in the, in the meantime, any, any questions? No? Cool. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait a few seconds here. If it doesn't go through, then I'm going to move on because I'm about to be kicked out. Hopefully not. Okay. Oh, let me try to stop that and start again. Maybe it's... All right, so now I've got my thing here. All right, so it started, it started adding. So I've got Sebastian Hall. Is there any Sebastian Hall here? <laughs> All right. So if I refresh these, I should get at least one person. All right, so I have two, two people here. Cool. So it's, it's working. So I've got the timer running, and that's something that you would run on a schedule to do whatever you need to do, send emails or whatever you need to do. Cool. Uh, what about the UI? So hopefully I'm going to have time to show that. But I've got here a Angular, an Angular app. So I'm going it, to, it's running already, so I won't have time to go then and, and change this stuff so I can show you. But let me refresh these. So, all right, so it's going. All right. Something with cores here when you're running in a different thing. All right. Let me refresh these. So that values that I showed you before. So I've got my Angular app, and it's kind of working. So I'm, I'm sending a request, and I'm getting that list of values. So that's your UI, your rich UI. And in my home, I've got that Sebastian Hall coming up uh, with his date of birth and a bunch of people that's already in the database. So that's your rich UI. And how are you going to show that for, for your application? All right, so I'm going to move on and see if I can get through that, OK? All right, so how does the front end work? So if you're familiar with Angular, it's very simple. Uh, ng new app, then you go to the folder, and then you'll build your application, right? When you build that, you're going to have a, a set of JavaScript and, and HTML and CSS files, and that's your UI, OK? And what you do with that, you host that somewhere, OK? So you have someone, someone in charge in your organization to copy and paste somewhere, right? That's right, OK. So you've got your storage account. So I've got Angular there. Um, you've got the URL. So that's the URL you're going to use. Um, you just, just need to make sure it's publicly available. Otherwise, nobody can get that URL. And then you paste all that files. And then you have your UI up and running. Cool? Easy. And how does that fit with uh, Azure Functions? You create a proxy. It's just a plus there in the proxies. You set a name, whatever name you want and how the, the route is going to work. Um, in this case, I'm just using the get method because it's just HTML and CSS and JavaScript files. And then you, put, uh, you, you paste that URL that you had before in the storage account. Right? So now you have your function app in that URL, and you have your UI in the same URL with forward slash ng. So the, the same URL, and you're not going to have problems with um, calls anymore, with the calls, um, cross origin resource sharing. So you're hosting the same place. So that's how you would handle your, your UI. Uh, I was going to demo that, but I'm not going to be able to get the, the Wi-Fi running. It's probably not going to go there. 
Uh, and how does the, the DevOps work? And how does CI and CD pipeline work? So you don't want to right click and publish, or you, want, you don't want to um, copy and paste your storage account, right? So you want that to be triggered automatically. So how does that work? Um, so you go to VSTS. Who here is using VSTS? Also the build and release, or only, yeah, a few, yeah. So at SSW, we use a lot of um, Team CD and Octopus Deploy, which is amazing, uh, because VSTS at the time wasn't that great, but they, they improved a lot. And for Azure, the integration with Azure is amazing. So if you haven't tried, just give it a try, it's pretty cool. So you go there and you create a new uh, build definition. You choose your, um, your repository. So right now I'm using GitHub here because I'm using the repository I'm gonna share with you. Uh, and then you put your, what repository you're gonna get from, which branch, and then you continue. Um, and from there, what you're gonna do is which template you're gonna use, right? Um, because I'm using .NET Core with my Azure functions, I can just use that .NET Core here. And it, it creates already a bunch of steps that's um, pretty standard, just the, the restore of the NuGet, um, the build, test, and publish. That's very straightforward. The only thing missing here is because I'm using both the function and the UI. So I need a few, few more steps for the UI. And what I'm gonna do is I'm, I, I'm gonna add two NPM steps and one is for the install, the npm store, and one is the npm build. So after that, I have my UI already, uh, ready to go, okay? And then I save and move on to the release. So my, my build is done, so I have all the tests and build done. If anything fails in there, it's not gonna move on. And now I go to create my release definition, and I'm gonna start empty because I know what I'm doing. I, I hope I know what I'm doing. Um, and from there, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set the environment name. I'm gonna start with dev here. Uh, I'm gonna get the artifact from the build, from the CI pipeline. So I'm gonna get that build, I'm gonna get the project and the build definition, and I'm gonna set okay. So I have my artifacts coming from the build so I can use that, okay? And from there, I'm gonna set the steps. I'm gonna deploy that. So something I would love to see here, so see that you have Azure function, uh, Azure app service deploy. Um, it's not very clear that it supports Azure Function if you're not familiar with that, but there is a, a, a very uh, little line here, Azure fun uh, Function Apps, uh, which is available. Okay, so once you do that, uh, when I said about the integration with Azure, it already uh, shows you which uh, Azure subscription you, you want to use, which is pretty amazing. So it's all there, you don't need to hack around or anything like that. And then from that, you're gonna choose which app type you're gonna use. So in this case, it's function app, and which function app you're gonna deploy to. And that's it for the function app. So the function app is gonna be deployed after that. Uh, and the next step is xcopy. Who's done xcopy before? <laughs> no, no it's, it's called Azure file copy, which is pretty similar, right? Um, so you choose that, you, you search for copy, and then you add that. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna, we're gonna bring that, um, all the function, um, the UI that you, get, you got, all the, those files, and you're gonna copy to a storage account. So all the steps that you did manually, drag and drop, that's, what, that's gonna handle that, okay? So you're gonna also choose your subscription, the blob storage, which account you're gonna use, and which container are you gonna use, all right? Pretty straightforward. Um, one thing that I found out, and it was very, very painful. If you do that, and if you don't set this flag here, the set content type, what it does is, is it, it copies all the files, but it copies the binaries, and it doesn't know which content type it is. So if you hit a HTML in there, it's gonna try to download the HTML, which is, yeah, which is funny. But I found out the, the bad way. All right, so once you're done with that, so you just set up the continuous deployment, and you're done. I'm not gonna do a demo with that, um, so here are the challenges that I covered today, so hopefully I crossed all of them. The multiple environments, I didn't because I didn't have time to go to the, to the portal itself, but you can set up multiple environments in very different ways. Um, but hopefully I covered uh, all of that. Um, so here are some resources um, if you want to get the source code that I covered tonight, today and the, the official Azure Functions uh, repository as well. So a bunch of nice stuff there. Cool, that's it. Thank you very much.